All right, I'm back with another tutorial. This one was not on my schedule of tutorials to do, and it doesn't really follow the natural progression very well. But the thing is that our character, if I hit Shift 2, and I look at our traits, he has this sociable trait. This is a random character. I didn't pick this trait, and I wound up with, you are a social creature, spending time with friends will improve your mood, but if you're alone too long, you'll start to feel unhappy. And the unhappiness level of our character being alone all the time is uh, starting to impede my ability to make these tutorials. So we got to get this guy a friend. With that in mind, it's time to talk about how to make friends in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I'm standing next to the uh, NPC who is at our starting location. So uh, we started in this evac shelter on the map. And uh, when we look at the map, it tells us that there is an NPC here, Everett Stefan. And here he is. I can use the X key to hover over Everett Stefan, see that he's neutral and ignoring me. In other words, he's not hostile and attacking to kill. <laughs> he is aware of me, and otherwise I'm not hiding from him. He knows I'm here. And it's going to tell me what he's wielding and what he's wearing and this kind of thing. There's a couple ways to interact with him. I can bump up against him if I walk this way and I bump him by hitting my uh, left arrow or my four key here. We've got the option to uh, do various things with the NPC, talk to him. We can examine uh, his wounds or status or use an item on. Use an item on, what does that mean? It means put a bandage on the guy or uh, uh, use an alcohol wipe to clean and disinfect his wounds or something. And uh, allegedly we can sort his armor, although I don't think he's going to allow us to do that because we're not friends yet. Let me, let me try sort armor. Yeah. Everett Stefan is not friendly. Well, he's not hostile either. He's neutral, right? So he's got to be a friend in order for us to do stuff like that. And probably, I think he's probably got to be a friend in order to use an item on. You don't have the necessary items at hand anyway. So whatever. We'll get into bandages and stuff like that later. But anyway, I just want to note that you don't have to be uh, directly next to the NPC to interact with them. So I'll teach you a new key today. Let's say, uh, let's say we really didn't trust Mr. Stefan here. Let's say we were uh, coming up to the evac shelter and uh, our map would still tell us that he's here. We could uh, say open the door and kind of carefully step inside and then hit the shift C key. Now shift C is all things talking. So we've got uh, talk to Everett, uh, yell. That just means go, ah! And it's a way to uh, scare away geese or uh, dogs, possibly, uh, or to call uh, slimes toward you, or, or to, if a, you got a zombie who's lurking in an area, you want to get him closer to you, you could yell and he'd be attracted to the noise. I don't think yell a sentence has any particular use. Um, it's just a role-playing thing. Uh, they've actually added, I think, to the 0.h candidate, rather than the latest experimental, we'll have the option in this menu to think about something quietly to ourselves, which is a much requested feature for YouTubers who want to do some role playing on their channels. Uh, I, this one is new to me, emote. What do you want to emote? This will have no in-game effect. This must be similar to the thinking to myself thing. Emote um, waves my hand at Everett. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So that added something to our chat log. And I think that's dadgum handy. I'm looking forward to using that in my series is upcoming. Anyway, if I hit C, uh, uh, capital C, I've also got the option to talk to Everett from a distance. So Everett is saying, well, at least we've got shelter. Uh, very common for an NPC to start out in an evac shelter with you. Very common. It depends on your, um, it depends on various things related to the character creation screen for one plus it's kind of random i think also but this is a very common situation to have one here with you and uh so we can actually try to pick up a mission from this guy to improve our relations with them or we can try to recruit them to be uh, best buddies uh, trading might also be an optional thing yeah it should be uh one thing i want to note before we get into the interaction is the uh if i say what should we do now he's got a suggestion we should look for a farm they should have food and tools, and they aren't close to cities. Hey, this is good advice. <laughs> Great for the new player, you know. He says, well, I guess it's just us. Now, what I noticed was I was playing with this right here, something I did, never really used much before, and it reminds me of the Oracle of Delphi 
in NetHack. Now, you may not be familiar with NetHack, so I'll tell you a quick story. <clears throat> you used to be able to uh, go down to a certain level in NetHack and pay a certain amount of the in-game currency to get a tip from the Oracle. And I remember when I was a total uh, NetHack noob, I was about 12 years old, and I used to uh, do nothing but start a run, go to the Oracle, and spend all my money getting tips from the Oracle. Then I would write them all down, and I'd call my friend, who was also a NetHack, uh, obsessed with NetHack, and find out you know, what tips he had gotten from the Oracle. And eventually we got every tip from the Oracle to try to help us play this game. And it was, it was a blast. So kind of a similar thing going on here, only we don't have to pay for it. If I ask him for tips, he'll give me some tips. Uh, most gun stores follow pretty similar layouts. The restricted stuff, SMGs, assault rifles, and most importantly, ammo, are always behind the counter. Hey, that's a good tip. Now the great thing is, I can ask him for another tip. Avoid using launchers in narrow hallways. You might miss. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. You got any other tips? Have you seen those weird science labs in the middle of nowhere? I think you need some kind of special ID card to get in. Now, I don't know how many tips these NPCs have. Now, if I had just started playing Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, I would, I would just sit here for hours and read every tip until I was sure I'd read them all. Because this is great information, actually. <laughs> Weird science labs in the middle of nowhere. Special ID cards. Hell of a tip for the middle game, end game. So, you know, you're going to learn a lot about Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead by talking to these guys. Now, this Can I Do Anything For You is going to engage us in a uh, mission. There's lots of different kinds of NPC missions. But I want to recruit this guy. This is what I'm working with. This is what I'm working toward. I'm going to ask him to travel with me. Do you want to uh, travel with me? And he says, why should I travel with you? So we've got a persuade chance here. And I'm going to be really disappointed if this doesn't work. Um, these persuade chances have something, some relationship with our social skill, how attractive we are. Um, there may be a proficiency thrown in there. There's probably some random chances in there. Our intimidate chance kind of comes down to um, like how terrifying we might be. Now, I uh, believe, although you can't necessarily take this straight to the bank and make a deposit with it, but I do believe that our reputation like as far as how many NPCs we might have uh, murdered or whatever, not that we do these things in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, may factor in to the intimidation and persuade. I, I have a feeling that it kind of does, but I don't know how much of an effect it might have, or if it, if it even really does, but it seems like it does. I'm going to try the best persuade chance we've got. You can keep me safe. He says, yeah, I don't think so. But our practical skill in social has increased to one. Now, interesting thing to note here. Let's say I talk to him again, and I ask him to travel with me. He's going to say, you asked me again recently. Ask again later. Right, right, I'll ask later. <clears throat> now, I think that we can ask these NPCs, like, maybe something like once per day. So that's something that I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to talk to him about, you know, following us again. Now, at a 60% chance, you know, it's entirely reasonable to think that tomorrow or the next day we're going to be able to convince Everett Stefan to join our cause. Now let's look at the Let's Trade Items menu, which, you know, being a, what they call uh, on Reddit a wall of text, might seem a little bit difficult to work with, but it's not terribly bad. On the left-hand side, we've got the items held by the NPC, some of which they will not trade. And then on the right panel, we have the items that we currently have at our disposal, which quite often, I think, is also items that we have dragged into the room. Uh, so we may be able to just drag things in here for trade also. I've done it before. I think you can still do it in the latest experimental and 0.h. But anyway, so he's got uh, 40 rounds of 38 special and a concealed carry six shooter, and then he's willing to sell. We're looking at about um, $14 and roughly 50 cents. Uh, in order to get a gun and ammo in trade with this NPC. I'm not currently carrying anything over here that has sufficient value to really think about that. 
Looks like if we trade our entire golf bag and all of its contents, we have about $5 worth of trade items. So that doesn't include um, the clothes that we're wearing, which are mostly worthless. So you will probably begin to start looking at um, things that have trade value. And uh, every item that you look at, and I think we can examine our items from this menu. Normally, you can always do this. If I highlight an item like the flashlight and hit E for examine, yeah, we can get a readout on the item if we need to. Look down here, all item descriptions. Look at the bottom of the screen. It says price $9. Now, that was the pre-cataclysm price. I'm doing the math in my head about what kind of a flashlight this probably is for $9. There you go, you know. But anyway, the barter value post-cataclysm is so-called 15 cents. Yeah. And so, you know, the money has become uh, more worthless, I might say, or maybe more valuable. How does inflation even work? Never mind. Let's move on. Okay. Yeah, he won't trade any of this stuff. Now, he won't trade. He's keeping his pistol in his boots. I didn't even know you could do that. That's so cool. He won't sell his boots, but he will sell the pistol. All right, so we've looked at that option. Now, we've done, what should we do now? We've done tips. We've asked him to travel with us, and we've tried trading. We can ask him to share some items, but I never have the heart to ask them to do this because I don't want to get anything for free. I don't know. It's just something I suffer from. So anyway, we can also do, uh, can I do anything for you? And he has a job. Now, I can ask him to tell me about the job, but I don't have to take the job. He says, does our flag still yet wave? We're battered, but not yet out of the fight. We need the old colors. If I accept this mission, he's going to want me to bring him an American flag. For now, I'm going to say I'm not interested. <laughs> he, said, he, he said, seriously? And it accuses me of being a communist. <laughs> nice. All right, whatever. But uh, The thing about this is we can always come back and accept that mission. It won't change. But the reason I didn't take the mission is because sometimes I've found that if I take the mission, I'm locked out of asking that NPC to be a friend and companion after that point. But I can still take the mission once they become our companion, and they can actually help us to accomplish that mission. So there you go. That's my, uh, that's my plan for this guy, is to come back tomorrow and talk to him again. I'm trying to think whether there's anything else we can do with this NPC right now, and I don't think there is. I think this concludes our initial tutorial on how to handle NPCs. Once I'm successful in recruiting this NPC, uh, I will pull up another video and we'll talk a little bit about um, how to manage your NPC companion as far as um, their uh, combat, uh, you know, combat settings, uh, what they carry and this kind of thing can all be configured. And uh, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. You can always leave things at default, but uh, we'll look at stuff like that in the next video. Hopefully, uh, hopefully bet between now and the next video, I'm able to actually recruit this guy. Thanks for joining me. Hope you learned something about NPC companions. See you next time.